Hi everyone, so today I'll be doing a review of the Shani SN600SN camera speed light. Shani is a company that makes high quality yet affordable camera flashes. I've had this flash for about 8 months now and it definitely hasn't disappointed. So what do we get in the box? So in the box you have the, obviously the flash itself you get the stand that it's sitting on and you get this carry case to take it around with you. So on the front of the flash here we have the Shani logo and we have this AF assist lamp here. So this red section over here, when you're in low light or you need assistance with focusing, this fires these red beams of light onto your subject so the camera can focus in low light. So as you can see on the side here I've opened these flaps and inside are these ports where you can use to sync up your camera to the flash or wire them physically. If you don't want to just put it on top, you can wire it and then hold it in your hand. So on the other side of the flash is this the battery door. So the way you open this is this little slider over here. You slide it and then you pull the whole door and you pull it down and that, un that unlocks it. You have a little mechanism that flips open. So here, the, ba the flash takes four AA batteries. It tells you how to put them in here. The batteries that I use are these, these Enloop Pro batteries. These are the best ones for flashes. I recommend you get these ones, but if not, just make sure you have some high capacity rechargeable batteries and the way you close it is just bring this thing down again and just click it in and you should hear a small click there and that means it's proper secure. So on the back of the flash here you have all these buttons and dials and switches. I'll go through all these later. On the bottom of the flash you have this accessory terminal, you have this the hot shoe terminal here, so you have a little lock mechanism here. So all you do is you press the little button over here, there's a small button right there. You press this down and you turn it over and that locks in the flash to the camera. Then you hold it again and press the button, turn it over and it allows you to take it off. And here you have the accessory terminal here where you can put it on top of the camera or as you've seen here, I put it on the stand. And lastly, but definitely not least, is the flash head itself. So here we have the flash head here, so this is where the actual light is being emitted. You have also a wide angle diffuser on top, so if I just take that out, you, so to put that away for now. We have a wide angle diffuser here, so when you put this down, the flash is more widespread, it spreads across the room. And here we have the bounce card, so if you don't want to directly put light on your subject, you can bounce it off maybe the ceiling or a wall. and some of the light will bounce off this card and fill your subject's face or if it's not a person, whatever subject it is, it will fill it up with some fill light. There are also some markings on this side over here that tell you what degree you're tilting the flash to. So these markings are also on the side of the flash so it tells you how much you're rotating it. So you've got them on the left and you've also got them here on the right. Quality wise I think it's pretty good. Most of it is plastic, so the front here, everywhere the screen, the lamp over here, most of it is plastic but it's made out it's made pretty well. It feels sturdy in the hand. You've got covers on the sides around all these ports and the battery door. You've got covers everywhere to make sure everything's dust resistant and everything. So I think it feels pretty good. So the battery life on this is just amazing. I don't know if it's just the battery that I'm using, these Enloop Pros, or if it's the, due to the power consumption of this, but I can get so much power out of this. Like, sometimes I use it from the beginning of the day, and I can go through most of the day. Depends on how many shots I'm taking, obviously. But if it's just a general day, and I'm just taking shots of, let's say, I don't know, playing in the park or at home, I can get so many days out of this. Because if, if I'm at like a big event or something, I'd obviously have to have a few sets of batteries, but on gen in general, the battery life is really good in this. So the recycle time on this is pretty fast. So those of you who don't know, recycle time is the time it takes between each flash. So when you're in slower settings, so 1 one twenty eighth of the full power, then it's almost instant. I don't know if you can see the flash is ha happening there, but it's almost instant when I press it. Uh, when you get to some, when you try and get to some high settings, so, so 
if we go, so I hope you can see that 132, 116, This is still pretty much instant. When you start going to even higher settings, so let's say one half, so half of the full power, they're not, don't know full, how half of the power, you see there's a delay, so you hear that beep. So you, the beep tells you like it's ready, so it, so after a few flashes, you kind of have to wait. So this is the only time where you start seeing some delay. And obviously when at full power, you see a bit more delay. So it's a bit slower at full power, but it's still pretty responsive. Please keep in mind that all this recycle time and battery life I've been talking about, it highly depends on the batteries that you're using. So I really recommend you choose good batteries because it can really affect how your flash functions. So there are many different settings and controls on this flash, so it'd be good if you get to know all of them. Firstly, we have many different functions here. So we can use this button here to switch between them. First, we have the normal mode of flash, where you can switch between TTL, manual, and repeated mode. The next function you have here is when you have many different channels, you can choose repeated mode here and switch between the different channels. You have a slave mode here, so where you can control the flash from your Nikon device. This is the Nikon version of the flash, so you have Nikon here. And here you have other slaves, so they're not, they're not Nikon, so you can have slave 1 and slave 2. So going back to the normal mode, so firstly you have a TCL mode here, so this is fully controlled through your camera so you don't need to set any controls you can tweak it slightly by setting the exposure a bit higher and a bit lower but mainly it's all calculated with the flash and the camera interacting with each other so in the manual mode you have full controls over all the exposure so you set how much power you want so 1, one, one over 128 being the lowest power and then full pa you can use the dial up, the small dial over here and you just turn the dial around and you can just change the setting how you like it. So if you set the flash to repeated mode, it flashes for a certain number of times and for a certain number of times per second. So how you can do this is, if you press the multi button, this is the number of flashes you want it to take. So let's say you want the flash to flash, let's say, I don't know, 10 times. So you, put, you set it to 10. That means this, this flash will flash 10 times in a row. Now, if you want to set the speed of this, so if we set, leave it as 1 hertz for now, and I just demonstrate, if I hold it down, you'll see 10 flashes, and there'll be 1 flash per second. So let's go. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's it. There's 10 flashes, and they happened once per second. If we change the hertz now, let's say we want it to be 10 hertz. So that means there'll be 10 flashes per second, and we want 10 flashes. So the whole thing should end in one second. As I'll show that again, in one second there were 10 flashes. Let me just demonstrate that by zooming out and actually showing you the 10 flashes. So this is how it is. In one second there'll be 10 flashes. So you can basically just set it how you need to the number of flashes and how often you want it to happen and it will flash accordingly. So in all the modes you have this ability to change the zoom over here. So what the zoom function does is when you zoom on your lens, so if I zoom out now or zoom in, so when you're zooming on your lens the flash has to register that. So when if you're zoomed in really far you don't need the flash to be very wide angle and spread across the whole room because you're zoomed in on one subject. So the flash has to coordinate with your lens and change accordingly. The way you can change this zoom function is by pressing this function here so when you press it once you go to ZM so which is zoom and this highlights here. When you go all the way to the left so if we go all the way to the left it changes to automatic with the A here. This means that when you're actually t turning the zoom ring it will zoom automatically so you don't need to change it. If you want to actually use it manually so start turning it to the right if you press the zoom button again, so when it's highlighted, turn it to the right, and as you can see, you have a certain amount of millimeters, so it goes all the way from, so you have 200 millimeters is the highest zoom, 
and if you go all the way back it goes up to 20 but there's a way you can make it more if you use the wide angle diffuser on top and if you pull it out it, sh it when you pull it out it turns it to 14 so that means that when you're in 14 it's, it's more widespread so back to the rest of the button so the mode dial and the function dial will be showing you these buttons they're just universal they change depending on what's on the screen here so it tells you what each button is set to in each different mode so it, as you can see if I change them these are all changing depending on what mode we're in so every time the bu those buttons change all the time so this flash button so when it's red it means the flash you can press it and it will flash so every time you press it a flash bursts uh, you have a dial the dial here that turns around you have a select button in the middle so you can use to select stuff so let's say if you go around and change it and you press select it confirms it and here you have the on and off dial so what it does is you switch it or you can switch on off you can switch it halfway so if you switch it halfway the flash is on and functional but you can't change any of the settings so as you can see it says locked so in case you leave it somewhere and someone tries to fiddle with it they won't be able to change anything there. the flash will still be function but the the light you won't be able to actually change all the settings on it and when you switch it on obviously it's on full it's fully functional you can change all the settings and use it normally So overall this flash is really amazing, I've had no problems with it whatsoever, the build quality is great, the power and battery life are amazing, it's really reliable, I've used it in parties and weddings and it hasn't failed on me, so I feel that it's great for anyone looking for a new flash. So I hope you all liked that review, if you did please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video, bye.